All right, guys, we're going to jump right into this video. I already have a project here set up uh, where I've already imported my raw files, and I'll show you. So we're going to take a look at the clips. I'm just going to double click here so that we can see that, in fact, these are all raw clips, which they are CRM, Canon CRM. That means they're raw from the Canon C200. Okay, then I'll just double click. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sequence with these clips and I'm just going to highlight them all, right click, and then do, uh, where is it, new sequence from clip, and there we go. I have to do this, I put the sequence in the sequence folder which allows me to stay organized. So here's our timeline, right, so let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So we have all the clips in here. And now the only thing I need to do is essentially go to my color tab and under basic correction, because these are technical LUTs, this is where we're going to add the LUTs. So the next step would be, assuming you've already downloaded the LUTs, to go to your actual LUT folder. So I had put mine in the Samsung T3. And here it is. It is this zip file that gets downloaded when you buy them. So I'm going to double click it. And I get this folder. Media IQ, Canon C200, RAW, Lite, 2, Rec. 709, LUTs. So if I open them, I can see that all 17 LUTs are there. And if I change the view so that we can see the actual titles, Urban, Two-Tone, Teal, Punch It, Nostalgia, Netflix, Mono, low contrast, and so on. Okay, so now we know that the LUTs are here. So right away, once we have the LUTs and we have them somewhere we, we can get to them from our computer, we then can actually begin to use them. So going back into Premiere, and again, from the basic correction, once we selected the color panel, I can now, um, I can now go here to where it says basic correction, and under LUT input, I'm going to browse. And I'm going to browse to where my LUTs are, which are in this Samsung T3 drive. I'm going to open up my LUTs. And again, just to make it easier for me to choose so that I can actually see the entire file name, I'm going to go ahead and do this list view. Now, if I want to apply the Alexa lookalike, just click on it. You can double click and it'll apply it on a Mac or just highlight it once, click open and we're done. This, the LUT was applied to that clip and you can see if I toggle this on and off, that is the one click correction with this LUT pack. So this is one way to do it, right? We can do this with other clips just to show you. In fact, let's do this clip. This is one of my favorite clips. So I'll go ahead and I'll browse. Same folder pops up, which is where all of my LUTs are. And for this one, I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go with the Fujifilm LUT. This is another one of my favorites. So click on it and there it is. It's been applied. And if again, if I toggle on and off, we can very quickly see the LUT being applied. Now, that's if you want to apply a different LUT to each different, um, you know, different clip in your timeline. If you want to apply one LUT to your entire timeline, there's a much easier way and a much faster way. So what I'll do now is I'm going to actually delete the Lumetri adjustment that I made to these LUTs. And this essentially resets everything for me, right? So now what I'll do is I'm going to go into my project tab. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do new item and I'm going to select adjustment layer. Most of you probably already know what this is and how it works. Some might not. So I want to make sure that I do this. So I'm going to say OK because essentially I want it to be the same size as my entire timeline. So I'm going to drag the adjustment layer onto the top. So this is basically the second video um, layer in my timeline. And I'm going to expand it to cover the entire timeline. 
So now, what I'll do is I'm going to select the adjustment layer. I'm going to open up my color tab again. And now what I'll do is I'm going to go, I'm going to find this clip. Okay, cool. So I like this clip just for reference because this is going to be applied to the whole thing. So as long as my adjustment layer is selected, I can then go into the basic correction again and browse for the LUT that I want to apply. And if I want to apply, let's say I want to apply the punch it, punch it LUT. And I click open, punch it LUT is applied in this layer, right? And what that means is that it was applied to that layer and it covers every clip in the entire timeline. So we can see very quickly how the punch it LUT behaves in all these different environments where if I turn off that layer, we, we're right back to the way that it was captured in camera. So the layer is actually really powerful. Of course, if you want to select something different, so let me just browse and I'm going to select the broadcast LUT, which is the one that I use for most of my corporate work. So I'm going to select it and you can very quickly see we just changed the LUT that was applied to the entire timeline. I'm going to switch this so I can see more of the timeline. And you can see all the clips have been corrected with that one single clip or click. So that's really important. Now, what if you don't want to have to browse every single time to find this LUT and you actually want to install them into your system? So the way to do this is actually pretty easy. So I'm going to close Premiere Pro. I'm going to say, do I want to save it? Yes, I do want to save it in case I need it again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my application. So I'm going to go to Finder. I'm going to go to my applications. And then I'm going to find Premiere Pro, which is right here. I'm going to double click it. And then I get the actual icon, right? If I double click this, it's going to launch the application. But if I right click, I can actually say show me package contents. So now I get the contents folder. If I double click the contents folder, I then see all of the things that make up the application, which all we care about is the Lumetri folder. So I'm going to double click Lumetri folder. And now here I can see there's a LUTs folder. So double click LUTs folder. And now we have creative, legacy, and technical. So these LUTs in this LUT pack for the Canon C200 RAW are technical LUTs. So you would open up the technical LUT folder. And now here you can see I have some technical LUTs that are already loaded in here. So what you would do is you would go to where you have these LUTs stored. I have them stored on my Samsung T3. I'm going to bring them over change this to icon view so we can see a little bit better and now here's the folder there's a zip file and when i unzip this fold this file it created this folder so i'm going to literally just copy so i did command c to copy and i'm going to go back into my technical folder and i'm going to paste it and now it's asking me for my password so that it could allow me to paste it and now my let's have been placed inside of Premiere Pro. Now, this is good if you're working in Premiere Pro, but what if you're round tripping between um, After Effects? You then need to do the exact same thing for After Effects. So let me just walk you through this. So now here's my After Effects folder. I'm gonna double click it. And then I'm gonna again, right click, show package contents. I'm gonna select contents. I'm going to go to Lumetri, and then I'm going to go to LUTs, and I'm going to open up the technical folder, and once again here, I'm going to paste it. So it's asking me for my password one more time, and now my LUTs have been installed into After Effects. So if I'm working between After Effects and Premiere Pro, I'll have access to the LUTs in both applications. Now, the last thing, if you're not rendering directly from Premiere Pro, and you're using Media Encoder, you need to install those LUTs into Media Encoder also so that when you um, when you queue the, uh, the actual timeline to be rendered, it actually can take the, 
the LUT information and then apply it to your footage. If you don't do this step, it will actually render your clips without any LUT adjustment. So just know that. And to do this, it's again, very simple. So I'm going to go back into my applications and I see Adobe Media Encoder, double click it. On the icon, I'm gonna right click, do show package contents. I'm gonna open up the contents. I'm gonna to go to Lumetri and then I'm going to go again to LUTs. I'm going to select technical again because this is a technical LUT. And then I'm going to paste that same folder after I type in my password. And now I am all set to be able to export a timeline. In fact, I'll open it up. Let's see, Premiere Pro. Essentially, now I can queue up multiple projects to be rendered at once so I can keep working in Premiere if that's what you're doing. You can round trip between After Effects and Premiere Pro and the LUT will follow because you now have installed it in both applications. And again, if you're using Media Encoder and you're batching your renders, like most of us do, since it ties up, you know, computer resources, um, this will allow you to make sure that you have the LUT with you. So now that I've deleted the Lumetri adjustment that I made to the adjustment layer, I'm going to scrub to an area that I want to use as reference to make sure that my LUT is actually being applied. I'm going to go to my color tab. I'm going to select the adjustment layer. And now because the LUTs have already been installed, I won't need to browse and try to find that LUT, right? Now they're already part of Premiere Pro. So what I'll do is I'm going to scroll down and the LUTs are named C200 raw and then the rest of the name, right? So I'm just gonna scroll down to where they're at, C200 raw to Rec 709. And then here I can go and make my pick. So I can select broadcast three as an example. And there's my adjustment. And if I change my mind and maybe I don't like the way that broadcast three looks, I can go right back to C200 and then pick something else like the HBO LUT or the Kodak film LUT or any LUT for that matter. And that's really all there is to it. Um, if for some reason you need to make adjustments to your clip because, you know, whatever, let's say in this situation, um, you know, the window, it was right in the middle of the day, right? So dynamic range is, is a thing on the C200. And we want to try to maybe salvage some of the highlights in the window. You don't have to make the, uh, the Lumetri adjustment to the adjustment layer because that affects your entire timeline, but you can actually just select the clip and then here maybe try to bring down your highlights and see if you could salvage some detail. And as you can see, Premiere does a really good job of bringing back some of those blown out highlights. And now we can even see the wires on these telephone poles. So that's pretty cool. So any other exposure adjustments that you might need to make onto your actual clip, you can do it from here or you can do it in the actual raw panel, whatever works because of course we still have access to some of the raw controls. So like exposure, we can adjust and we can also adjust color temperature and then the tint, which tint is either green or magenta shift. So hopefully this helps some of you who are working in Premiere that may not already know how to use LUTs in Premiere or how to install LUTs in Premiere. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll do everything I can to answer them. I will have tutorials on how to do this exact same thing in Final Cut as well as in um, Resolve. So if you're one of those editors, um, just stay subscribed. Be sure to ring the bell so you're notified when we upload that video. And thank you again for considering using these Canon C200 RAW to Rec. 709 LUTs. And any feedback, you know, for all of you who have already purchased them is really appreciated. And for everyone who has already given me feedback, thank you very much. Um, I, it really does mean a lot to me. So again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this tutorial. Um, hopefully you guys found it useful. If you did, be sure to let me know. If you didn't, you know, do what you gotta do. And um, until next time, 
I'm Carlos with Media IQ, helping you guys compete in today's web economy. Take care.